Hey everybody, David here from Learn Christmas Lady, and in this video, I want to show you my quick, you know, throw together pixel testing rig that I used to test my pixels this year. Um, this was just controllers and things that I had lying around that I could use to build a quick pixel tester. Now, you might have something already set up, or maybe this is your first year with Christmas lighting and this whole uh, pixels and testing thing is new to you, and you, you just got your pixels, you need something to test them with. Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to walk you through how I set mine up so that it was just quick and easy for me to get going, plug in a bunch of pixels, and roll. So, it, and by the way, if this is your first year or you want more about Christmas lighting, hit subscribe, click that bell, so you get everything here from Learn Christmas Lighting. Now, first thing I did was I jotted down some math. And I said to myself, okay, I've got standard pixels, and I'm buying them from DIY LED Express, and their spec says that each pixel is 0.72 watts at full white. Okay? So I said, hey, I want to set my controller to 100%. Even though my show isn't going to run at 100%, I want to run these guys when I test them as hard as I can. Next, I want to do... 100 pixels on each output. Why 100 pixels? Well, I know that at 12 volts, because all the new pixels I bought this year are 12 volt, and everything into the future I buy will either be 12 or 24, no more 5 volt for me. Um, each output I want to do 100 pixels because that's how many I can do without injecting more power, so that keeps it simple and easy. So if I do that, it's 72 watts, and hey, easy math, 0 0.72 times 100 is 72. Now, at 12 volts, that's 6 amps, okay? And the math for that, you can find a calculator online or whatever, but you can see that 12 volts, um, 72 rather, divided by 12 volts, watts divided by volts equals amps, okay? That can be a head-scratcher. So then I said, okay, great. That's 6 amps, and I have for myself here this Advitec Pixlite 4, um, similar to a Falcon 4, for output controller, there's a lot of them out there that are like this. And it's got 10 amp fuses, which is great because that's 6 amps on each channel or a total of 24 amps at 12 volts, which equals, grabbing my notes here because I'm not great at math, 288 watts. Now, this is a good size test controller for a lot of reasons. The first is I can go with a standard 360 watt power supply. And I can run that 288 volts at full all day long on that power supply, okay? So that's the reason one, why this is good. Two, it takes a small controller like this Pixlite 4 Eco, um, and it uses all four outputs, and each output has 100 pixels on it. And so, when I'm testing especially, I don't really want to do more than 100 pixels on an output. Because as I'm testing along, actually let me grab some pixels. Because as I'm testing along down a string of pixels here, and actually I'll untie these quick and hate myself later for it. Uh, but as I'm testing along down a string of pixels, when one goes bad, when it stops passing data, then the rest of the line is going to stop passing data. And if there's a second string plugged into it, I'm not going to know if there's a bad pixel on that string without pulling this entire string out and moving that one to the front. So if I did more than 100 pixels, more than two strings in a row, um, my likelihood of having to go in and switch strings around again and again just to test everything accurately seems to go up. So the hassle factor goes up with testing the more strings that you add. So my thought is, keep it to two. That's twice as many as one, so I can do eight strings at a time. But if I run into an issue, I could just switch the two strings, put the bad one on the back end, uh, mark where the bad pixel is, put the good one on the front end, and keep on rolling. Since I bought like 14, no, 24 strands of pixels this year, and I could do eight, yeah, that was it exactly. I'm going to run these in three groups to test. So the setup inside the box is really simple. Um, probably simple if you've done anything like this before. I'm coming in with my mains power on a regular extension cord. Of course, right now that I'm, now that I'm touching it, it is turned off and unplugged. Trust me on that. 
And then I'm going out on there to my Advitech Pixlite. The Pixlite 4 is handling all the power distribution because it can do 10 amps per output, which I'm not exceeding, and it's got fuses. All right, so comes into there, goes into the Pixlite. Pixlite then um, goes out to the pixels. I attached my brand new whips that came with my pixels, fished them through a hole in the box. You don't even have to do that. You can just leave the box open, and then I'm ready to go. Um, to test them, I can just log into the computer to the Avatech Pixlite, and I can choose one of the test sequences. Falcons have these too, and I hope to have a Falcon soon to show you guys that kind of stuff. Um, but for this example, in my last videos on this channel, I went ahead and I bought a Raspberry Pi. And I installed Falcon Player on it, and I built a test sequence of x lights that just simply had four outputs of 100 pixels each, and I set it to the Falcon Player on this guy. So then I could connect this guy into my home network, connect this box with the Pixlite into my home network, power everything on, set it to run that sequence all the time forever and ever and ever, and then let my pixels burn in. And then I was able to test everything. And good news, uh, thanks to DIY LED Express, there were only two failures, both of them right near the end of strands, um, which I think is reasonable for how inexpensive these pixels are. I don't have a problem with that. So if you enjoyed this, um, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video here on Learn Christmas Lighting. Thanks.